Oh, hi guys, I'm Mike, and welcome to my channel. If you've seen my videos, then you know. I'll be talking about Pinewood Derby Racing. In today's video, I'm gonna quickly go over two things I forgot to mention in previous videos. One thing in the wheel video, and then one thing in the axle video. Then, I'll discuss wheel and axle prep. I'll go over how I prep my wheels for graphite and oil, and how I prep my axles for graphite and oil. So stay with me, you might find this helpful. Okay, folks, so before I get real involved in this prep video, there are a couple things that I missed discussing in my previous two videos, the wheel video and the axle video. So I'm gonna go over that right now. The first thing I did, first thing I forgot to mention in the wheel video is we discussed radial and lateral run out, but I didn't discuss the tread width at all. Now, every league I've raced in allows you to make the tread width 7.5 millimeters or about 2.95 inches. So after removing the run out, you usually can continue to take a little more mass from the width of the wheel. So here's how I do it. Now on the front wheel, I'll start by removing these tread bumps. Now once they're removed, I'll turn my tooling around and I'll start removing mass from the inside tread edge until I get it down to about 0 .300s of an inch. Now I stop there, even though I can go smaller, I stop there because that gives me the chance to repair a wheel later if somehow I get a nick in the wheel. Now the back wheels are cut a little different. Because of the orientation of the rear wheels, they ride on the inner edge rather than the outer edge like the front wheel. As a result, these tread bumps don't even touch the track, so I won't remove them. Now the reason is because when the leagues measure tread width, they will include the tread bumps. Therefore, I can actually make this tread a little thinner. Now in the axle video, I completely forgot to mention, if you plan on racing in the leagues or if your scout rules allow it, you should always slot the heads on your axles. That'll give you the ability to just steer on the front wheel much easier. And as you'll see later in my tuning video, it'll make it easier to tune the rear axles. You'll be able to slowly twist the rear axle in very small increments until you find the car's peak performance. I'll go over that more in the tuning video. Okay, so now we're moving on to the prep. I'm gonna start here with the wheels. Now, whether I'll be using oil or graphite, my prep begins the same. I'll polish the treads first to remove any flashing from the manufacturer or any flashing created when I machine the wheel. I'll start with sandpaper, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 grit on the tread surface and then the inside edge. Then I'll move on to a plastic polish. This is the Turbo Derby number two. Now these pot checks you see, I also get them at Turbo Derby but you should be able to find them on my webpage also. Now it's very important to keep the inside edge very sharp on the rear wheels and the outside edge very sharp on the front wheel because of their orientation to the track. So now that the treads are done, I'll do the same thing to the inner hub. But rather than using this craft stick, this popsicle stick, I'll use the cotton end of the Q-tip. Now after polishing the outside hub, I'll turn the whole wheel around and I'll use the number one and number two wheel prep from Turbo Derby on the outer hub until they shine. Okay, so now it's time to polish the bores. The stuff I use is a three-step process. I'll start with the number one, which is a more aggressive abrasive. I'll put it on a Q-tip stock that has a similar diameter as the bore. Now lately, the Q-tip stocks I've had have been a little large. I've had to sand them down a little bit. And I'll go in and out, in and out, in and out until I've removed all the imperfections. Now once I've confirmed the imperfections are gone, I'll move on to step number two. This step, I either use a pipe cleaner or a Tamiya swab. Now the number two is a less aggressive abrasive and I'll keep using it until I make those bores shine. Now it's probably important I mention the three-step process, the number one and the number two are both abrasives. The number three is actually a wax or a sealant. So after I use the number one and the number two, I'll clean the wheels thoroughly before moving on to step number three. I'll scrub the treads and I'll use a pipe cleaner in the bores. That way I'm making sure that when I apply the step number three, the wax or the sealant, it'll bond well to the plastic. I'll apply step three with the Tamiya swab, blow it out, let it sit for 30 minutes. I'll buff both hubs and blow them out again. If you're planning on using oil, I'm calling this wheel done. Now graphite does require one additional step. Here's what I do. 
I'll start with another Q-tip. I'll make sure the diameter is similar to the bore of the wheel. I'll soak it briefly and I'll apply graphite directly to the stock. I'll dump a little graphite into the bore and then I'll burnish the inside bore multiple times until I'm happy with the shine. Now I'll move on to the inner and outer hub. For the hubs, I'll use the cotton end of the Q-tip. I'll soak it, add some graphite, and I'll burnish both hubs until I'm happy with the shine. When I'm done, I'll blow it out, put aside, and I'm gonna call that wheel done and ready for assembly. Okay, so it's time to discuss the axles. Now, if you watched my previous axle video, you already know on stock axles, I'll remove the burr with a triangle file. Then I'll polish with 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 grit sandpaper, and then the number two polish. And I'm gonna pay close attention to underneath the head. Underneath the head is more important to me than the shaft. If I'm working on aftermarket axles, I'll do exactly the same thing, but there is no need to use the triangle file. So after that, I'll soak the axles in acetone for about an hour and then alcohol for another hour. I want to make sure all the polish has been completely removed from the axle. I'll blow the axle dry and I'll buff them out with a lint-free cloth. Okay, so from here, the prep has been the same on these axles, whether I'm using oil or graphite. But from this point forward, what I do is determined by whether I'm using oil or graphite. Now for graphite, I'll spray the axle with Lemon Pledge and I'll wipe off the excess with a lint-free cloth. Now for oil, I use this product. It's called Jigaloo. It's a silicone spray. The goal is to create a pneumatic bearing between the wheel and the axle. Now that's accomplished by getting the oil to bead well. Now the number three we used on the wheel is a sealant that'll make the oil bead. The Jigaloo is the best I've found to make the oil bead on the axle. I'll make sure the axles are clean by wiping them down and then blowing them off. And then I'll spray a very light coat of Jigaloo on both sides of the axle. Then I use, I use this little Tupperware thing here. I'll put them in there and let them dry. So guys, thanks again for watching my video. If you've made it this far, I'd have to assume that you like these little cars just as much as I do. So please like, share, and subscribe. I'm gonna pick a name at random, and I'm gonna send that person a set of prepped wheels and prepped axles. And also, watch out for my next video. I'm gonna do a, a video on aerodynamics. So until then, we'll see ya.